Welcome back to the You Missed It podcast. This is episode 14, the hero edition. You can find us on the social medias like facebook.com slash you missed it, Twitter at YMI underscore podcast, soundcloud.com slash you missed it podcast, and on iTunes. I like how I just blow past iTunes. Oh, I don't yeah. Give a shit about yeah, it. I f- yeah, everybody forgets about iTunes. Yeah. Right? iTunes. Right? I tune out. Ah, there you go. Yeah, you're getting on my level. <laughs> I love it. Andrew does too. I lived with yeah. you for like four years. It's going to rub off on me a little bit. That's but to true. be fair, any of our any of our listeners who are PC users out there don't give a shit. We're on iTunes because the program doesn't run worth anything on your computer. No. Yeah, I haven't had iTunes on my computer in a long time. We got to get on Spotify. That's the next. I'm on Spotify. No, but I mean, we got to get. Oh, this yeah. oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> we, Ooh, I, oh, me I, too. I, 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 Spotify. Yeah. Do you have another channel plug for us, Jack? That's classified. Oh, you mean the mailbox? Oh, shut up. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the mailbox. Yeah, you can send it any, um, you know, envelopes or any uh, packages. This is or the worst sexy running pictures. gag. Should we, in the should, we, should, we just, should we? Yeah, just if you want to, if you want to send like a single shoe, just send a single shoe <laughs> to Jack's house. Yeah, maybe you'll win a million dollars. We'll be revealing you know, the postal know. code one character at a time yeah. over the next six episodes. So stay tuned. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, take over. <laughs> <laughs> and now to this week's film, which was my pick. Hero is a 1992 comedy drama romance directed by Stephen Frears, who, previous to this film, directed The Grifters in 1990 and Dangerous Liaisons in 1988, as well as many TV movies in the early 1980s and throughout the 1970s. Which, uh, which can you name the 70s ones? I recognize that name. No. Damn it. I didn't do research that thorough. Alex. <laughs> Damn, Damn you're usually it. like Mr. Essay over there, so I'm, I'm shocked. It's like iTunes. I didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> the screenplay is by David Webb Peoples, one of the screenwriters for films such as Blade Runner, Leviathan, and 12 Monkeys, as well as being the writer for films such as The Blood of Heroes, Unforgiven, and Soldier. The story is by David Webb Peoples, Alvin Sargent, and Laura Ziskin. The film stars Dustin Hoffman, Gina Davis, Andy Garcia, Joan Cusack, Kevin J. O'Connor, James Matteo, Maury Chaikin, Stephen Tobolowski, and Tom Arnold, among others. It was released in the United States on October the 2nd, 1992, had a budget of $42 million, an opening weekend of $5.2 million in the U.S., and made back $19.5 million, with a cumulative worldwide gross of $66.8 million. The film centers around one Bernard Bernie LaPlante, a somewhat down-on-his-luck guy, sometimes by his own design, sometimes not, divorced but allowed to spend time with his son, whom he tries to raise to be more moral than himself, awaiting a a possible prison sentence, and then a plane crashes in front of him one night when he's on his way to pick up his son from his ex-wife's house for some quality time at the movies. Long story short, he saves everyone on the plane without being identified, and he steals the purse of one of the people he rescued, a reporter named Gail Gailey. In the aftermath of the plane crash, one of the shoes of the mysterious hero was left behind, and a frantic search begins put up by the network Gale is employed by. Eventually, a man steps forward who seems to fit the shoe and the bill, but it's not Bernie, who by this time has gone off to prison. Will he emerge and prove himself to be the man everyone was looking for to the absolute surprise of everyone who really knows him? Watch for yourselves, dear listeners. The idea for the film was born when producer Laura Ziskin and Alvin Sargent the Academy Award-winning screenwriter, who co-wrote the story for this film, were watching the 1988 presidential primaries. They became intrigued by television's power to instantly create identity and reputation with a single act or image. When Ziskin later saw television news reports of a plane crash in which people were rescued by a man who came out of nowhere, she gave the the scenario a comic spin. Quote, What if a truly wonderful act were performed by a person who's actually pretty crummy, a lowlife, a criminal, a Bernie LaPlante, end quote. Director Stephen Frears added, quote, 
the press are treated as a fact of contemporary life, powerful, pervasive, and often highly amusing in their fervish pursuit of a story, end quote. Two classic Hollywood screwball comedies are said to have inspired this picture. They are Frank Capra's Meet John Doe from 1941 and Preston Sturgis's Hail the Conquering Hero from 1944. Fun fact, this is the film debut of Tom Arnold. Is it? Wow. Actually? Oh, oh wow. yeah. Oh, wow. <clears throat> I never would have guessed. I thought he was in the scene earlier. What year did this movie come out again? 1992. Oh, that's so far. He's he was just starting to get in around that time because like two years later he was in uh, True Lies. True Lies yeah. and Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he was just getting, he was with uh, Roseanne at that time, and I think he got in. Roseanne got him in. It must yep. have been. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. When a person thinks of the films starring Dustin Hoffman, oh boy, mm. Tootsie, Kramer vs. Kramer, Marathon Man, Rain Man, The Graduate, Midnight Cowboy, All the President's Men. Outbreak, Hook, Dick Tracy, perhaps even Meet the Fuckers comes to mind. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And in my defense, so should this film. Uh, This, I think, was a great character piece for Dustin Hoffman. When a person is writing the screenplay for this film, and you think of the lead character, you think, who, who could pull this off? Someone who the audience likes, but at the same time, maybe they're playing a person that isn't really all that good, but the audience is still with them anyway. Mm -hmm. At that time, I think that was Dustin Hoffman. Mm -hmm. I think he fit the bill. And I think this film, I think it really stands out for its time, although it was bogged down from in 1992 by many other films. Mm -hmm. Here's a short list. The Mighty Ducks, Wayne's World, Aladdin, Bram Stoker's Dracula, The Last of the Mohicans, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, Cool World, Candyman, The Bodyguard, Home Alone 2, Reservoir Dogs, Batman Returns, Unforgiven, Basic Instinct, Scent of a Woman, A Few Good Men, Army of Darkness, My Cousin Vinny, Chaplin, Sister Act, Universal Soldier, Twin Peaks, Firewalk With Me, Lethal Weapon 3, The Crying Game, Patriot Games, Under Siege, Passenger 57, Malcolm X, and White Men Can't Jump. So it, I think it got kind of buried in there. Oh, for sure. So Yeah. Give it time, someone like me is going to find it and bring it back. <laughs> so I want to hear what all of you had to think and say about it. And I'm going to go reverse order <laughs> because when we left off, I had told Andrew that, that the melody from this film connects with the last film. So what do you think of the film? All, uh, speaking of songs, I guess uh, all I could think of is... Uh, I can be your hero, baby. Ugh. Oh, yeah. That's all you can think of. That was, you know, that, it, we should redub it that way. We should redub it that way. Oh, for Christ's sake. But, um. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, we're going to wait. Oh. He just armed me with something. I did. <laughs> I don't like this. Anyway, um. So, uh. Yeah. So. Uh, I actually really, uh, I really like the film. I I thought uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman's character was actually really, really interesting. Like he was this asshole, and he plays an asshole pretty well. Um, mm-hmm. And but he, you know, he just uh, is a good guy at his core mm-hmm. when need be. You know, when in the critical moments, right? But I, I liked that. Uh, I think the big thing for me because I always. Um, as I've said before, uh, tend to focus on story a bit more. I like the premise a lot. I thought that it was a really interesting premise. The idea that, um, yeah, what if the hero was just some asshole? Yeah. And yeah, what if it is, right? And then the idea, I, I especially liked um, the idea at the end of the film because I wasn't expecting that. The, the, the direction they went at the end of the film, um, the idea that maybe it's better that a nice guy is in the spotlight and the real hero even the, uh you know doesn't de- want or really deserve the spotlight because in general he's a crummy person as you say but the guy who doesn't deserve the spotlight is kind of does better in this it does better things in the spotlight than he ever would and they kind of just have their own respective spots that their own spots that make sense for their personalities that's right and i liked that angle because the whole time you're thinking that oh, this character is going to end up uh, 
kind of take uh you know taking the spotlight and uh, away from this other character right the whole time and i like that they didn't kind of cheap out and do that and they did something mm-hmm. different so yeah i i just I, I i i i was just laughing consistently at how he was playing that character just because he he was always saying like the way he was saving everybody from the very beginning i was invested in his character because mm-hmm. he's just saving people and complaining about it yeah and it's <laughs> great because he's like you're doing something awesome and like and you don't even care. you're like oh this is kind of inconvenient but like ah oh, yeah i guess i gotta do it yeah, that, that's yeah. right. The plane is right there in front of him. Ah, oh, for Christ's sake. Oh, I gotta go pick shit. up my kid. Get yeah, out of the way. Can you get my dad? She's like, go get somebody else. Like, yeah. No, you gotta... Oh, fine, kid. Whatever, right? Yeah. Going around. Uh, it, it was a Fletcher, right? Was yeah. the, the guy's name? That's Are you Fletcher? Fletcher? No. I'm looking for Fletcher. <laughs> like, fuck you. You're like, come on, don't leave me. Say, ah, oh, fine, you know? Like, yeah. I just loved it. It was so great. The way he played that whole scene, I thought it was like, so that was fun. For me that was just an enjoyable like uh, that was just an enjoyable rescue sequence that also had it was still heroic but it was also hilarious yeah it's so, funny and tense which yeah. is kind of unusual. you're like oh is he gonna get you know what you know is he gonna is he gonna save everybody what's gonna happen but also he's you know i'm, not, I'm no bodybuilder you know like that's right give me a hand right it's just the kind of shit you'd think that uh that you would say if you talk too much during scenarios like that right so it's it's just kind of funny. Uh, I, I I love the way he played that, and he played it through the whole movie that way too. And I like that his uh, character remained consistent. He never changed. Mm. Like he never changed to somebody who he's not. He was always uh, remained. You know, it's not like I'm a changed man at the end because that would have been a little too cliche. I like that he's always that same character. Uh, he uh, you know he he has his motivations and he sticks to it. And you're kind of fine with the character he is, or the yeah. kind of person he is, That's right? right. And it's it's it was neat. I I like I liked it. Like at the end, they really reaffirmed that as well with his conversation with his kid. Mm-hmm. Just kind of saying like, I thought you said that was stupid. I know, I know, but you did it. Yeah, I know. I fucked up. I screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. You know. <laughs> it was it was good. Yeah, it was just really good. Um, that's another great pick from you, Alex. I gotta say, like I I enjoyed it quite a bit. I had a really good time. I was engaged. I was I was wondering what it was that character. I was wondering how he was gonna handle all this stuff or what was gonna mm-hmm. happen, mm-hmm. and uh, it just kept the movie going at a steady pace. Yeah. It was good. Good good pick nice zach i know it wasn't an italian horror film right did you like it though well before that only a hero can save us us. i'm not not gonna gonna stand stand here away if you don't think that i had (laughs) multiple hero songs in my head the entire time that was on my mind don't think that it wasn't no i had to remind him of that because that was the only song that could go through my head and that's not even which is shocking which is shocking and now that song will never leave mine thank you at least that trilogy and yeah i should have thought of that right away yeah but that's hilarious just uh but there, uh, there was one more hero song that was that I many. thought of. No, that I thought of at that time. It was a. Uh, uh, I'll come. I'll come back to it. Yeah. But um. Yeah. No. I mean, I thought it was really good too. I mean, obviously, like Dustin Hoffman, you know, despite the controversy now and everything, but just putting that aside with the movie and everything, I thought you know he played it very well. I thought the uh, the character was really interesting. It's something you don't see, right? And mm-hmm. you expect it to go one way with him. Like, you've seen that plot many times where it's like, oh, this guy's got what I wanted and stuff like that, but it's you know it's really him, but we're the only people who know, you know, that it's that they're the right person or whatever. Like, there's been movies that have kind of done that. Kind of like mistaken identity. Kind yeah, of thing. right. Yeah. Um, but then, um, but yeah, it's cool how, like Andrew was saying, um, yeah, he really just kind of, you know, he doesn't change. He's still the same asshole and stuff, but he reveals that good inside him that kind of comes out. And it's it's kind of a neat idea of how it's like, he's this asshole, but in like tragic situations, that's the only time that good will come out. Like Joan Cusack was but saying that. But he's still that. an yeah. asshole while he's doing Sure, but <laughs> but 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 he, but he shines in like chaos, crisis like crisis situations, yeah. and it, it's just I don't know. It's a really neat idea. Um, and at first, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. Like at first, it, it took me a bit to get into it, but then mm-hmm. once I kind of like once the plane thing happened and I started to get into his character a bit more and stuff like that, I was like, oh, okay, like I'm really getting into this now. And then from then on, it was smooth sailing. So 
I don't I don't think I've that, personally really had any complaints. The the anything. plane sequence didn't like hook you into his character. That's what hooked me. Okay, I was gonna say that was the moment yeah. where I'm like, yeah, this character is. That's that was is, me too. Because at the yeah. beginning, I was like, I'm not sure what this is, right? And then yeah. that happened, and I I thought it was hilarious. Just again, like it we pretty were all much pretty much what there. you said, like Andrew. It's just like him swearing and stuff, and like it, it's just something you don't see, right? You don't see him like somebody swearing while trying to save people, and it's like. Oh shit! It's almost like a job you don't want to do, but you have to show you, up. Like you know, I kind of like if I think about, I just I'm drawing a parallel here. Yeah. It kind of it's like if Hancock was actually done in a good in, way. in a good way. Because yeah. like Hancock, like I like the first, the first half, half was of that okay. Movie, yeah. That's what I'll say. <laughs> And I like the idea of like a shitty hero, yeah. you know, like Deadpool's kind of that in a way, like, uh, he's a good, he's still a better hero, but like, you know, he's also kind of crude and, and not the perfect hero, but yeah, he, I, I, I'm drawn to that as well. And I mm-hmm. think this did that like Hancock idea of him being like pretty shitty in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, uh, that there's a parallel there, but the difference is they took the cheap route and changed his character. He has a whole arc where he's like. I got so much. Am I? I have changed. I'm actually more heroic now. But I like they kept consistent. They're like, no, this is him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and and that's the thing, right? And it, it just makes the film more unique because without that, it would have been like, oh, well, I've kind of seen this. She would have started to, um, to do that kind of thing. But the other thing that was really surprising was all the different cameos. I had no idea that like Chevy Chase was in this movie. Even Gina Davis. I mean. You know, and just tons of different people. Joan Cusack, I had no idea. Like, I knew Dustin Hoffman was in it, and that was about it. Um, but just, yeah, it had a pretty big cast. Tom Arnold, too, as you'd said, like, mm-hmm. you know, debut and stuff. And, yeah, there's a lot of people who are just kind of showing up, and it's like, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, even yeah. even people that I didn't know the names of, I mm-hmm. had seen their faces before. There right. were, like, three or four. Andy Garcia? Well, Andy, Gar- yeah, one of the main ones. Oh, yeah. yeah, there was a lot of smaller ones. Like there was one, um, there was one character who was um, the one. The, I think I'm gonna say the editor woman who was going through frame by frame with Gina Davis. Oh, that yeah. woman, yeah, very obscured, but she was in one episode of Seinfeld. So there was a bit two <laughs> Seinfeld connections. Her, she plays like I believe she plays a character who Jerry's going out with, and she seems great, but then finds out she used to go out with Newman. Oh, oh, that one! <laughs> yeah. That's good. Episode. And he cannot fathom why. Like, yeah, Newman. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, that was the same woman. And mm-hmm. of okay. course, Jerry's dad just shows up randomly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, hey. <laughs> And that was pretty fun. And then there was one other guy. I don't know his name, but he's in Kirby Enthusiasm. And he was the heavier set guy who was handing out the newspaper. Like, hey. Oh, I've oh, seen right. him many times. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he was, yeah. he's in a, a lot of stuff. He's in yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff. I just don't know his name. Uh, Bum. Oh, that bugs me. Yeah, but I've seen Butt some boy. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. And, and wait, I, one thing I wanted to bring up, because you just mentioned it, and yep. I didn't even realize that. What was the reporter's name, the character name? Gail Gailey? Man, what mean parents. <laughs> Gail Gailey? Like, really? Like, you got Gailey as a last name. You're going to name her Gail? <laughs> think about that for a minute. It's no worse than Chris Christopherson. <laughs> like, honestly, it. it's pretty bad. Or Chris Christopherson, there's like, like, what, Chris Christie? It would have been like, shit like man, that. You're like, on. these are these are names. It would have been worse if she was it. the weather girl instead of a newscaster. Yeah, <laughs> sure, that's right. <laughs> but it's like, oh man, come on, mean parents. But I mean, but yeah, but but going or just back avid to, comic book readers. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, I, I I don't really yeah, just off the top of my head, I don't really have any complaints. And it, it really was like, again, you know, Dustin Hoffman's character was just kind of so you know different from what you usually see in those type of like, you know. Uh, hero you know out of the average citizen kind of movies right so it's pretty cool uh, you yeah, expected really hero it. kind of trope yeah or, yeah or. but they they really had a really good spin on it um yeah. that kind of pulled you through the movie you know made it yeah. sexy yeah he's a reluctant hero an anti-hero yeah yeah very much so and i like that a person um, who'd rather be somewhere else at the time man but it's just they yeah. just happen to be in front of him so and i loved how he, i loved how he's just like i fucked up like it's like that's yeah, how he yeah. sees it right he's like fuck i was in the wrong he's place thought, wrong dad time. i thought you said to do this i know <laughs> keep a low profile like watch right. my sho- watch my shoes <laughs> he looks at him like but oh, he no, says i'm it- doing it again <laughs> i just uh but watch it, my shoes he's, yeah i know it says it like almost resigned but just like a little bit badass yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like yeah okay for i can sure, go for this for sure yeah That's you good. you were talking about comic book guys and i gotta do this 
I nominate Joel Schumacher as the worst director yeah. ever. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that out there. It's got nothing to do with the film. And I really liked Phone Booth, so yeah. do not believe what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Ryland? <laughs> I really enjoyed this movie, too. Um, yeah, the, the oddball... Uh, the oddball main character is absolutely hilarious. He's not something you you usually you usually see. Like, yeah, you've got your heroes, you've got your anti-heroes, and then you've got this guy yeah. who kind of just he's kind of just like a a <clears throat> low life kind of compulsive petty criminal. But at the same time, he's not like a terrible person either. Like, he's just like he's he's really just a petty thief slash con artist. But he's not the type of you know, the type of guy to hurt anyone or be violent or anything. Okay. He's just kind of a shady character who does happen to show his good side under duress. And again, and like uh, these guys have all made clear already, not in the way that you would expect. Very, very uh, reluctantly slash angrily, but he gets the job done at the end of the day. And um, anyways, when, when somebody ends up taking his credit, you kind of feel like this knee-jerk reaction that like, you, you know, it's like, no, this this guy's our real hero. You you want him to have the credit. But as time goes on and you see what this other guy is doing with his fame, it's like, okay, he's handling it a lot better than our main guy would. And that kind of makes you realize that there are, there, it, it, the, 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 the notion of a hero, it kind of almost takes more than one person. It's like the two collected kind of make one good person, really. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's that kind of element of it that does that good perhaps doesn't necessarily exist except as a concept of yeah. a, a structure kind of created by multiple inputs. Yeah. Um, and more so the, the, the presence and the impact of the media in the story as well. I was, I've noticed is a running theme with your movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it works really well in this one as well. I love um, uh, the, uh, the onion story near the beginning mm-hmm. of the movie yeah. where the onion as she's carving it away it represents the story but it also represents the source and as she you know she makes a point of getting to the center and being like a, in a search for truth and only finding nothing but never ending layers of stories and by the time you get to it there's there's nothing left there's also nothing left of that person after you've carved away bit by bit for your own profit and taken everything from them and yeah. that's what she kind of realizes at the end when she sees john on the ledge and that's and prompts her her kind of again instant knee jerk decision to 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 quit the yeah. reporter business which i feel like i wish kind of that that arc that element had been a little bit more played up i get that's maybe not that's that uh, dustin hoffman and um hoffman's character and um john uh uh John B something. Bailey. It is a weird last name and Bubsy. There's Bubsy. someone out Bubber, on the Bubber, ledge. Thank you. Oh, it's not Bubsy, but I think it's hilarious that I just. <laughs> but anyway, it's it's, it's, it's about like those two characters. Banger or something like that. Banger or something. Like that. Bubber. 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 Yeah. Bubber. Bubber right? Not a, not a lot not a surname I'm familiar with. So if that's a common one, John I, I apologize to all any yeah, Bubbers Bubber. listening to this. But at any rate, it's it's about uh, it's about John Bubber and Bernie Laplante, kind of finding themselves thrown in this situation and learning off of each other. But I kind of wish that the, I feel like the, the, the media element did have a good part to play, especially with the supporting cast. Like everybody who had the bit parts at the, uh, at the channel four news over there were hilarious as well. Um, So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have minded seeing a bit more of them and building up that side of the story, but I did get a bit out of what was there. So, Hmm. I mean, I do appreciate it for that as well. And I did have another point to make, but I can't remember what it is right now. Well, so I'm sure we'll come back to it. <laughs> I, I like your point that uh, the idea that like two halves make a like a an overall good person, mm. all right, or a hero. Well, because right? no no one person but is like, perfect. Yeah. So I guess well, exactly. if you put it's like one was good at philanthropy and one was like at the, that uh, at you know kind of having that public face mm. and, and mm-hmm. doing uh, yep. that kind of work and then one was uh, uh, like a, a crisis a person mm. who handles well in a crisis so it's like the difference of having like a Bill Gates somebody who tries to to like give back as much as possible and is very public that way mm-hmm. and then you have police officers firefighters people who do the yeah. day to day and maybe at home they have a lot of problems or they're imperfect but mm. in a crisis 
their heroes. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's like yeah. it's almost like heroism in like two separate forms, like active There's and so passive forms, if you right? will. Yeah. Um, and I guess if you put them together, you kind of get the ultimate. Yeah, you get like super. So you have so you kind of have. I guess perhaps this movie is about the the very the forming of a very unlikely dream team. Mm, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, actually, well, yeah, and maybe get the cameraman <laughs> in there too, which I also got. I was just say oh, shout out to that cameraman. Him yeah. <laughs> always like referencing his own shots and what he I, loves I just about like them to while shooting. Jack as that obsessively <laughs> muttering about. F stops yeah. like <laughs> hey hey Jack now for the uh, for the uh, filmmaking perspective and uh, how are those F stops the fact that you're saying how are those F stops to me is kind of hilarious well yeah <laughs> just F16 <laughs> is pretty freaking tight <laughs> yeah. that's pretty tight I think most of the movie was shot like a four so yeah 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 nothing probably. too low than that it, to answer your question, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> You're welcome. You uh, did mention 5.6 at one time. That's still pretty. So bright. it's pretty, yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, oh, oh. You okay? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to enjoy editing that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jack, you're just, you guys are too funny right too now. Too funny. <laughs> Rylan is losing her life. This is where we need the soundboard. Do we go wing, wing? <laughs> <laughs> make laughing noises the laugh track <laughs> As a soundboard sounds like a terrible idea. I think oh, it's God. a great idea and we nope. need it nope. I think we fund us it. fund no. us for the soundboard because right. exactly. you know somebody would press the button that goes and it's him yeah the, the only Ding. reason, no, no, the only reason we don't get a soundboard is Kim. Yeah. He's the only reason we don't get it. Because he would just like play like a piano. <laughs> I've seen him play with a piano. Every comment and he won't would have stop. Something. Oh my God, I'm sorry if I spit on you guys. You no, it's okay. It missed me. You it got your me. phone pretty good yeah. though. This has been out in the rain we're, multiple we're times. The, I'm not worried oh, about okay. it. We're in Ryland's splash zone over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're at Waterworld. I don't know if you realize. Or it's like the Evil Dead uh, musical. You just sure. Got a oh, my Andrew, that's a better one for Andrew. But that's a whole Waterworld. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. now, now that I'm done monsooning, um, you can get back to me. Yeah, Jack, give us the filmmaker's perspective. Don't Let's go. F stop. That's right. I want to hear all the Fs. That 5.6. I want all those Fs and numbers. Throw in some F-bombs, too. That's right. No, uh, F-bombs are reserved for me. Yeah. F-stops are for you. F-stops are for me. Yeah. Citizen Kane is not for you. Citizen Kane is not for me. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so what did I think of this movie? I'm still trying to process that. Mm, um, yeah. I'm, agree- I'm with you, Zach. Yeah. At the very beginning, I'm like, I have no idea what to make of this movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I went to this cold. I didn't know anything about this movie. I, I'll be honest, never heard of it. Until wow. sat down and watched Same here. it, Same here. Um, Same here. which is great because I, I rarely get that experience of like I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Mm-hmm. Where is this going? At first, I'm like, hey. like basically once I got to the plane crash, then I kind of then yeah, I got exactly what this movie was going to yeah. be. But at first, I was like, it felt like the tone was everywhere. Yeah. Is this comedy? Is this uh, more of a? Um, I'm using satire as a way to mm. not be comedic, but as a way to show like how the Another satire look at the like media. Like a, a, com- a commentary, like some kind commentary. of political... Thank or you. A, yeah, like a political or social It's a commentary, commentary on the media and all, yeah. really on the media. Yeah. Um, but once the plane crash happened, I really got an idea of what the movie was about and what it was, the direction it was taking. Um, honestly, I will say the character, I think, made this whole movie work. Um wasn't um, Dustin Hoffman or anything like that. I actually thought it was Andy Garcia's character. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I really liked him. I thought that character, the fact that that, that we know he's lying. Mm-hmm. We know that. And yet, we still he is still the most sympathetic character out of the entire bunch. We, mm-hmm. Besides just lying, the movie doesn't give us any other reason to hate him. Or to antagonize him, and I really, really dug that. Well, it shows he has a conscience. He's not. He's not. Mm-hmm. Willing, he's not looking mm-hmm. to take advantage of his newfound wealth and fame yes. and fortune. He's. He wants to do the best he can with. Yeah, it, and that's the thing that. Noble. Yeah, and that's the thing that was really interesting because it could have been just a straight up farce comedy where mm-hmm. we know this asshole is taking. It could be taking money from him and mm-hmm. just, you know, showing that oh, this crummy guy who's an asshole is not given his due, and this mm-hmm. guy who took all his fame is an asshole. It's like he, yeah, this is an even even bigger asshole. Yeah, and it's a battle of the assholes. Yeah, you, to... <laughs> and you would think that's where the movie's going to go, but it doesn't. Yeah, it yeah. actually took some unique. Uh, it took the movie in unique directions with seeing his like conflict of feeling like, "What am I doing? I did not ask for this," and it also mm-hmm. kind of really pushes up the whole commentary on the media and how they kind of um, 
what's the word? There's a how they kind of basically use these people to their ends me just to tell a story. Like the whole dramatization part of it, I'm just like, Jesus Christ, people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I that like no makeup, no idea. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I hear all those all the time. Just, ugh, just it, at times that can make you feel uncomfortable and. Actually, funny enough, there are times in this movie you're just like, this would not fly today. Well, no. Particularly with the plane, all the plane shit. Fly downward. Oh, oh yeah, just the Channel 4 news. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, God, this would never fly today. No. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, Nailing it. Yeah, no, <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> Wait, um, why? Just because it's so shitty, or I don't... No, it, it, no it's, it's in bad just, taste. It, it's in bad taste now. Yeah. Yeah. A plane? Um, oh, a pl- oh, after like a yeah. plane crash? Yeah. yeah. Being that comical with like, because any other plane crash scenes I've seen since, um, even since then, have all been, you don't take this. You don't make light of this, just given what we've actually no. seen. Um, yeah. So it was sort of kind of neat seeing, you know, before that and seeing the perspective of it. But obviously now with time, obviously this wouldn't fly. Um, but yeah, just, I don't know. I just, it took me a while to really. I'm still dissecting this movie about mm. overall what I really, really thought about. I feel like I really need to see it again mm. um, for that reason to kind of really get a good idea of, you know, where I really stand on it. But for now, um, I will say that it is uh, it's definitely worth watching. I think mm. it's really uh, – it gets really engaging. There's not a dull moment in this movie. It keeps going with, like – you know, at first you're just like watching Dustin Hoffman just being a complete asshole, and you're just like "fuck you." And then you see um, the news people and just how into the world, and just basically every character in the news agency is explaining their job constantly, like from the cameraman to "I'm a professional, this is my job," and all yeah. that stuff. And then the Chevy Chase character doing the same thing, keeping very business and his bald. Uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Who's that actor? I've recognized him. Mm. His assistant. Uh, he was the the head of the network. The actor's yeah. name is Stephen Tobolowski. Oh, what's he been in again? I'm just blanking. Uh, Groundhog Day. Stuff, yeah. Groundhog Day. That's yeah. one. Yeah. But he's been in a lot. He's been in a lot of stuff. He's, he's been... always like a go lucky kind of yeah. s- like happy go lucky guy in most stuff. Like he gets typecast a little bit. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's a, he's a character actor for sure where you just, he yeah. can fill into that role. Oh, really hiya. Well. You know, like he's like <laughs> that guy. Yeah, he can be the simple guy too. Yeah. 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 Like he's, he's that like simple, like your coworker or whatever. Like, I feel like that's a lot of what I've seen him mm-hmm. do. But yeah, no, honestly the, it was the dynamic between the parallels showing both Dustin Hoffman and Andy Garcia, I thought was the most interesting part of the movie. Cause mm-hmm. Um, again, just kind of like with the movie we saw uh, last time with Andrew, seeing both sides and giving them both their due and showing both of their humanities instead of hero-fi- making a hero out of one side and vilifying the other side. Mm-hmm. They kept it very gray, yeah. and I really appreciated that. I thought that was actually uh, good storytelling there and actually kept on making it interesting because you didn't know, is he actually going to reveal it? And I kind of liked how the movie played out. I really did, how it was still kind of like – it kept in with – uh, the Dustin Hoffman character. It kept true to who he is. It didn't do anything where he pulled a true last minute, you know, hero move. Like change of heart. A change of heart. Of yeah. He, he stuck to his guns and basically made it work for him. Cause yeah. that's yeah. in the end, he is mainly about for him. Um, and all, everything he has to do is out of reluctance. Mm. And I, yeah, really enjoyed that. So yeah, overall I, I did like the movie, I think, but in terms of what I, more depth into it and really what i think about it i really have to watch it but from a first impression i did enjoy it i think this is the first movie in a long time where nobody's had any like reluctant comments or anything it's a pretty much a clean sweep i think it's the first one in a while there's nothing in it i can say that was yeah. bad like there's well, and i liked it because like like you were saying like i genuinely didn't know how they were gonna how they were gonna make this work yeah and yeah. uh like i mean in yeah, it's it, it's pretty funny. Like I didn't watch the trailer or anything before mm-hmm. uh, before this one, so yeah. I had no idea what to expect going into it. Yeah. So like what you know when he's after he saved these people and he's hitchhiking home and he's in this car with this guy mm-hmm. and all these bottles and cans in the back. I thought it was just a throwaway scene, but yeah, yeah. very turns quickly out that... turns out that is not the case. Yeah, and that guy in the driver's seat and... is your other major player in the story. So I thought it was pretty funny how that. Yeah kind of came back out of nowhere if yeah. you were like me not expecting it it was he, he was, it was kind of a nice player. surprise because it yeah. ended up working very well 
Yeah, I didn't think like he was the focus though. Like I, I thought Dustin Hoffman's character. Uh, Lafont, no, no, I, I don't I thought think... he was like the well to Jack's comment in a way because um, he was saying that uh, that it was kind of like between the two, right? They were. They, I don't think they were split time. I thought that Laplante was the one who was getting. Uh, who was the focus? Oh no, he's the main character, yeah. and he's the he's the, uh, no doubt about that. His would, arc was what he, was la- focused and, and your, and your well, argue, lack of lack, lack of, like, of an arc, really lack of an arc. But his story was yeah. kind of yeah. that. It was this movie was more his story than it was. Yeah, yeah he's following Bubber at parts, and we're following. Him. I think yeah. I think he's just saying that it's a yang to the yang kind of thing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would say I would say uh, the reporter was more the secondary character, like the, oh, the oh, no. next character. Oh yeah, no, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't really saying yeah. that Andy Garcia is the second most important character. I was more just saying that in terms of showing this character side by side with the Dustin Hoffman character, because those two are like. Oh, not exactly, but it's almost kind of like the the uh, I'm for blanking on the the something in the Piper or uh, the Prince and the Popper. Prince and the Popper, in the way where they're kind of swapping roles. It's not identical; mm. so it's not the same looking, obviously. Mm. But in terms of, I thought that's what the movie's going to be. You just oh, had a belligerent okay. idiot be given the praise, and you have the actual like main heart in the slums. Mm-hmm. But by showing both of them dealing with their own crap and showing. Um, humanizing the Andy Garcia character I thought was I, I I felt really held the movie together instead of it being predictable and yeah. made it unpredictable yeah I, I I definitely don't think it was predictable mm. I I just I think my the if there was one thing that I that I would criticize I I would why well, it's not even much of a critique it's just like the way I felt about it I didn't think that uh, Andy Garcia's character was that redeemable like I thought that he had put himself pretty deep into irredeemable territory that it was more of a, a con- that, that was more of a concession. And I thought actually uh, La, Laplante, his motivations were like his resolution at the end, his solution was far more, it was a far more mature response to the whole thing. Mm. Like to mm-hmm. no, let me stay and you take credit. You're a better person. Like he proved that he was, the better person all around mm. because he's willing to it's like self-sacrifice after self-sacrifice with that character mm-hmm. even his own reputation everything he does not care mm-hmm. at the end of the day but uh, he does actually care about overall yeah overall good in the world mm-hmm. whereas this other guy you know he's well-meaning i'll give him that they did a good job of making him well-meaning but i still think it's hard to uh to redeem that initial action because he did a real sh- like shitty thing regardless to how he handled it afterwards or regretted it i mean he still was ballsy enough to 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 come out and do this like he had to Mm. have known there was a tension coming his way i think he i think he knew that and all that and the one reason why i say i think he knew that is because from the moment like besides like the interview is the first time where we we like he he says yeah i did this and all that crap but from the start going from then on we understand his his point of view and just like those little moments of where like you can see like the guilt ridden on him and the fact that he didn't want all this and he wants to you know he sees basically where he was the day before as he's walking by all the media and he's trying to say okay i've got myself into this may i can at least make something out of it mm-hmm. and like helping out with like the homeless telling him to give blankets out yeah, yeah. and he just sort of sits there like they might actually listen to me like they might actually do this yeah yeah you and, can you can like the way he says it you can hear that you can hear the wheels turning and yeah, yeah. Like, the, and, the power means something yeah and then helping yeah. with the kids and all that i feel like just seeing that constant like he he's in his own shitty situation so he had a, as you said he had a moment of weakness he decided mm-hmm. to go do it because of just in the situation he is and he's in and that's why i sort of i didn't you know, when it kept going and showing his actions and his choices after he made that decision is why I felt a little empathy for him. Yeah. And I didn't instantly, you know, put him away because I was yeah. like, I liked his conflict. I'm like, where is he going to go with this? What is the decision yeah. he's going to make? I really enjoyed that and that they gave him a little bit more depth than just being yeah, a stock. I'll, I'll agree. He had like, he mm-hmm. wasn't a just a, a static character he had more depth than, mm-hmm. than yeah and i it's it's one thing to like know that you're going to be in front of cameras and stuff it's a whole nother thing to walk in front of them right and yeah. that's that's the thing is it's like you can think you know you can handle something you but know, you're also you're taking the money but then you do it and it becomes overwhelming it becomes too much 
and he can't get out of it because of the situation he's in. No, so but I think it's, it's a real kind of scummy thing to take oh, credit is. over somebody's um, because it, that's the the least of it. The million dollars is the least of it, but the yeah. idea that these people whose gratitude who think that you save their mm-hmm. life that mm-hmm. you're taking resp- that you're letting that perpetuating that lie that's something mm-hmm. that's that's pretty scummy to those people mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. because it is, at the end but... of the day uh, you're 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 this like false prophet to them in a way yep. like yeah. these people are have all this gratitude it should go in the right direction right but, it should go to the person who saved them regardless right i yeah. think that they that that's that's a shitty thing to do to the people who were saved because they they you know they have all of this that they want to give to that person and to give it to the wrong person that's pretty shitty but i also like how he kind of gets his you know i mean just the fact that he's like ready to jump and shit like that well that it eats well, him up so yeah. much yeah and, and, and that, it's a learning almost like a learning curve for him that's the thing. i feel like, like he shit. learns from his mistakes very quickly yeah like um uh, like he like he wow. seems pretty resolved in his mindset to do good, like pretty quickly. Uh, like, yeah. we, like we could have had a, a few scenes or a montage of him doing ridiculous things with his newfound wealth and yeah. like living it up. Yeah. But he does. We don't. We get one scene of him like walking around this palatial suite and admiring fruit baskets from Barbara Streisand, kind of curiously. But but then by the next scene, he's sitting down uh, with dinner to the reporter, just being like, "I'm not sure I deserve this." Yeah, yeah like, he has instant regret where yeah. he's just like, wait a minute. And then, of course, just seeing everything around him, he he's in too deep. Because yeah. that's, yeah. that's the one thing the media does is um, really, like, show, like over, like, sell an, a, an image, whether it's a person saving something and they'll make him a celebrity and they want to... The fact that like, I'm doing these, like, dramatizations of what he did yeah. um, is... And, like, you just know, like, in their minds, at least the people uh, funding all this, it's like, oh, we can put him here next. He can be on an award show. He can be in a another TV show or another movie. Well, they can use him. They use, can use him. And that's pretty, We've seen that before. Yeah, and that's what all yeah. – that's what pretty much all the media was doing and showcasing it. You know, I love how they're showing all the different channels and they're all just – really just winging it and guessing what they're doing. Like, oh, there's something going. There's something going. Coffee. And I'm, <laughs> yeah. just, I'm just like, that's the media in a nutshell. Just really well, building, sensationalizing something that's really minute and means nothing. Yeah, and I love how they're just like non-human too. Like I, yeah. I, like, I, I love how like they're talking about like, oh my God, he's going to jump. And like the guy's really pissed off that it's channel 13. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's yeah, got it. It's on man. channel 13. He's like, what? And he's more upset that like they didn't get it. It was like another <laughs> news. Oh, the fact that they're, they're, they're okay with letting them drop. Yeah. And be like, it's a good story. You got him going all the way down. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, actually, that scene was pretty. I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> but like, I mean, honestly, it's not that far. Well, I mean, we've well, talked about tragedy know. as a commodity. Yes. I think as pre- in previous episodes, and that yeah, it shows you a little snippet before. of it there as well. Yeah, <laughs> I, I re- <laughs> Hollywood's relationship with the media and what they think of the media. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this comes up a lot in 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 films, and we've seen it even on this podcast quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Yes. we've talked about this before. Money, selling the drama, selling emotions. Yeah, SFW. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. Right. Alex has a theme going on here. I think. Oh yeah, you can. Well, yeah. it's like you said before. Everybody kind of has. Everybody their has thing. their thing. Yeah. You can see yeah. people through their picks, is what yeah, you were totally, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna okay. throw you guys a curveball. Mine, just saying. Same here. Okay, good. So uh, I don't know. I'm an open book. I guess you can. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna be predictable. No. Um, yeah. No. I I just Avatar. I don't know. Maybe for me with that character, I I think what it comes down to for me personally is that he was just it was such an irredeemable act that although I did I believe the arc and I believed his regret, I was maybe just a little bit less forgiving than you guys for what mm, he did okay. because I just find it. I just found it so bad. Like, just because you know that's inherently very wrong. Oh, yeah. Right right away. Like, there is no gray area there. It's Whoa. just one of those things where you're like, no, I know it's wrong. So, I know what I'm doing is wrong. So is um, stealing someone you're saving off of a burning plane. So yeah. that's sort of the thing. Like, every character. I don't know. See, thing. that one I can excuse a little bit oh, more. Okay. All because right. All right, gloves are off. <laughs> because the reason I can excuse that a bit more is because, well, I just saved your life. 
So, you know, whatever. It was gonna like it was gonna like explode anyway, so whatever. Yeah. Well, like fuck it. We're even. Well, like she she even yeah. says like they burned up in the plane. Like she didn't know. Yeah, it was she didn't know. I was like That's no exactly big deal, right. right? Like I'm thinking of like the bigger so like consequences of your actions. Not really but that severe smart of a consequence, it was right? A smart plan. Yeah, so too. I'm like no big deal, yeah. but the consequences of his actions of what he was doing are severe. Mm-hmm. So, no, yeah, you're saying, like, you're going to compare the two of those things? No. <laughs> They're both bad acts, but, but I don't know what you mean with the scale. Yeah, no, no, the, the, no yeah. scale's fine, but I'm just saying, though, you can you, Context you, matters. Yes, severity it does. matters. Yes, it okay? does. Yes, it does. So does the F-stop. <laughs> <laughs> F-bombs. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, Jack. The F-stops on the F-bombs? <laughs> yeah. The F-bombs never stop. No. Nope. Nope. No. No. Nope. But, uh, I don't know. But, but like I said, like, I just liked that they didn't... I, I just liked where they... He wasn't one dimensional, and I yeah, and I felt like that really kind of made the movie. I felt more interesting is that there what they did. There was this uh, uh, conflict, inner conflict in him when you thought the whole thing is. It didn't go the way you thought because no, and I really and I I appreciated that. I thought it. I think it just it elevated the movie to a little bit more. Yeah, when it led it led to that. The, like the the climax, the ending, where it's yeah. it, it was a cool change of pace. Where and then it was actually, like, oh, I didn't expect that. Yeah, and then he actually does do a heroic thing by saving him. Yeah, and then it becomes yeah. this whole thing. Yeah, I think that. So the, I'll say that redeem that that redeemed him a bit. That redeemed mm-hmm. him for me. But I still thought everything up until that point, I wasn't quite as on board with how he was feeling. I was like, well, mm. yeah, of course you feel shitty. You b- put yourself in the situation and did this awful thing and you feel awful and I'm supposed to feel sympathy for you. Mm -hmm. That's what I was feeling. But then it got to the end and I was like, okay, fine. But he does mention you. you, You're yeah. I agree with uh, Laplante's like, what are you going to do? You're just going to do this This is stupid, right? Like Mm -hmm. you're, you're being an idiot. I agree with him on that part of it. Um, but it was more the fact that he kind of, he stepped up and he took the plan. He's like, okay, I think that's actually, uh, a moment of self-sacrifice for mm. him yeah and i thought that redeemed that that redeemed him in, mm-hmm. in my eyes but up until that point there was so much of the movie where i was just like yeah. no no well, even yeah. that internal conflict i'm like yeah okay i'm supposed to feel bad because you keep feeling shitty about all the, the what you did like mm. uh, no because you have conflict doesn't excuse it mm-hmm. yeah i thought uh, also pretty much in varying um ways all had their Re- shitty moments and then sort of redeem yeah it but a like bit. Even Laplante the G- owns it no no but that's even, the but difference he, that's true but uh um and i feel like mm-hmm. him being the only one who does really own it yeah uh, says a lot about every other character in the movie exactly like i'll bring up even with we were talking about gina davis um her first scene she literally let, just lets a guy fall to his death just yeah. to get a story yeah. that's also pretty shitty yeah um i that- never to be honest i never really liked her character that much mm-hmm. just i don't know just because like her like i i like that she she kind of turned around and, and realized mm-hmm. what she was doing was kind of crappy the whole time and you know i i kind of figured it might go that way because she seemed to have that conflict at the very beginning well, the onion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah like she was already like right at the beginning of the movie regretting yeah. things so um i just thought she wasn't very like rylan was kind of saying she wasn't very uh, the, there wasn't much depth to her character because they didn't give her a ton of time. Like mm-hmm. the, that was the time. I know. I I, I would have liked if they could work on her and her conflict a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. So it, it was less like a fault to to how she played the character. The character itself is just the idea of well, I didn't have much time with mm-hmm. her or much development. Yeah. No. So I, I feel just, like Gina mm. Davis did a fine job. Yeah, I just yeah. I just yeah. I think she could have had maybe a couple more scenes. Yeah. I just wasn't as invested because of the way the the movie went. Well, one thing I was gonna say too, though, like earlier on, is that Laplante does kind of tell. Andy Garcia's character that he's not interested in the whole thing so that's why he kind of took it because he's like well if he's not going to take it then I'm going to take again, it so dude. again I, I think that again. also makes it a little less shitty to be no, honest no because I think it you're does. pretending to be these people's savior but he didn't want it so it's like so free, what? it's like money and let he gets them all not that. know let them let them imagine who this hero would be in their heads and let them have this this hero in their but minds. are you going to give up a million a dollars in front of, and being that Taking they would have any, but here's the thing. Even the show, like any, there was hundreds of people willing to. Yeah, but that's the yeah. thing too. Is if if this this guy didn't do it, somebody else exactly. would have. And yeah. this guy that's did a lot better things. So. That's never a and, good excuse. And it was a million dollars. No, I'm not I'm not saying it's excusing his actions. I'm saying yeah. it would have happened anyway, and it could have gone a lot worse. Yep. 
Yeah, people say that all the time. Well, if I wasn't in control or I wasn't doing this to somebody, somebody else could be. Uh, humans don't worse exist in a vacuum. It, it's right? gonna happen. Honestly, yeah, no but that's what. not like it, it's. It still doesn't mean that you should. That's that's a villain's mentality, I think, because the villain thinks, well, you know what? Since I'm the best, I'm the best option here because I'll do it better. That it'll be somebody else and they'll be worse. I'm not than saying me. that was a conscious decision on his part. I'm saying that given what we've seen in the movie, that's a safe assumption to make. That that what that somebody else would have would have sure but i, I uh, stepped in and possibly been but you don't know again it's one of those I things where i don't think it's pretty safe call, to say i don't think that's a call you should ever make if you're a, if you think you're a good person but when you're desperate and you have nothing yeah and you you're like living no money. in your car desperation can take over yep. very quickly hmm. and that's something i think is very relatable is that when yep. you're in a shitty situation and you've got a possible out You'll take it. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't think about the circumstances. You don't think long term. You just think, I have this shoe. This could get me a million dollars. I'm living on the streets. Yeah. I need to eat. Anyone would take that. I think a lot of people would. would. I think somebody not in need. Would well, and, 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 yeah. and, and also you know the dinner I mean? too. He was like, man, like twenty bucks, fifty bucks would have been good. I don't think he yeah. seriously thought he nope. was actually going to get a million dollars. He just saw money and was like, okay, let's I'll get go. something. I mean, yeah, but yeah. Then it was overwhelming. The whole thing was instantly overwhelming. Like, I, I get why. Yeah, he like would I think, do I, think it. I feel like thing. he. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not saying he did the right thing. I'm saying he mm-hmm. maybe thought that what he was doing was okay, but yeah. quickly realized, shit, I done fucked up. Yeah. yeah, and he tries to re- redeem himself for that mistake, which he realizes becomes huge throughout the film with his that's charity. What I, that's, yes. that's what I feel like. That's why I oh, feel exactly. sympathy towards the character, despite him doing definitely. A, I I agree with what you're saying. What he did is completely wrong and yeah. completely fucked up. But I mean, it would have been. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like you can't un you can't unmake that omelet. Mm-hmm. Like if it, it would have been worse if the if they'd found out that this guy was faking the whole well, time. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's like what Rylands was saying earlier too. Like in a lot of movies, you would have had that character be like, "Woohoo! Like I'm going out on the town. I'm gonna go spend my money on a gold butt." But like, <laughs> but that's the thing. Like you know, in this movie, what to they get take Zach for turn. Christmas? Gold butt. <laughs> I want a gold butt. Zach's mailing address. You can send the. <laughs> send any gold, gold butt? Send, <laughs> actually, anything for Zach sent to Jack's address. At... Yeah, and then give it to me gold butt. Yeah. I want gold butt. Yeah, just send lots of gold booties mm-hmm. to Jack's place and Nazi. Flags, the dead rats, dead rats. Dead rats. the golden what about, what about let's just compromise and golden butts wrap the Nazi flags? Ooh, that's <laughs> good. I like that. Yeah, we'll save 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 ship like one box. Just yeah, one yeah. box. Also Easy. vegan. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Save the save the rats. <laughs> yeah, save. The I don't rats. know. I, at the end of the day, it's just it, it's harder for me to to justify his actions because as much as I, I at the end I could forgive him oh. for it. I can forget, like I in as as somebody watching this play out and watching this character, it's it's not like he's completely irredeemable. I think at the end, like I I can feel for him, but it's just one of those things where like I'm not gonna make excuses for this character. That's not, I don't I don't feel like I I don't feel like he earned it in any way. Mm-hmm. Like just by being, just by being kind of you know by. Um, by regretting it right away, I don't feel that that earns that you earn my sympathy just by regret right away. Well, I you think, have to you yeah. have to find it takes two steps. It just does doesn't just take regret. It takes making it right. If you are good enough of a person to realize you've made a mistake, you should correct it, and that's the part that takes courage and self sacrifice, mm-hmm. and that's what gets earns forgiveness and. Uh, as a even as a viewer watching that will earn my respect as a viewer something that a character I will like that character now, but if you just sit on your regret and let it stew for so long, that to me is it's that's not a redeemable quality at all. Yeah, I, I like I hear what you're saying, and like I said, I'm always in, I'm not tr- like I think we're all trying to say like he's not we're not you know giving him like an excuse you're saying like it's, i but, feel for him but, i feel yeah, for I, him but that, but that there's a difference mm-hmm. between excusing yeah. him and feeling empathy for him and understanding where he's coming from would i but would i ever do that or would i say yeah he did the wrong thing of course he did he shouldn't have done that um but i understand where he's coming from um whether i agree with him or not i get it why he would make that decision i understand i agree do i agree no um, you understand okay 
that's the thing. I also understand a lot of villains' motivations, but I don't necessarily. That makes the best root villains, but 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 so still, that makes the best villains. And I wasn't saying I wasn't rooting for Andy Garcia. I was just I get his dilemma, and that's why I liked his character a lot because I. I can at least understand where he's coming from. And that makes best villains as well. Mm-hmm. Ones you can understand their motivation, what yeah. they're going to do. Um, and I felt like this movie really tackled that better because there wasn't really a bad guy in this movie. No. You know, there no. wasn't. Not like a straight, like cartoonish. Yeah. No, they're guy. just like shitty people. Yeah. 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 And I feel like every character in this movie is shitty at some point. Yep. Like, Everybody's exactly right. right. Well, that's yes. the point. Yeah. It's it, Andy Garcia's character is Actually, the one I, who, who says says something along the lines of, we're, we're all heroes when somebody's looking yeah. at the right time. I disagree. The kid was always good. <laughs> well, you don't know that. No, man. I mean, at least from all the screen time he had, he was always good. All the... yeah. Daddy, won't you jump in and save that yeah. lion? I think he was a bully at school. Yeah, what do you think of that? I also don't yeah. think I also don't I think, think he was I think a real he's way old. too scrawny to be the bully at school. <laughs> but still, he's got friends and they all stand behind him. Well, he he's pushes got a some posse? little kid down. He's yeah. just the, he's just uh, he's like the Lex Luthor. He's just he can he sends everybody to do his bidding. Yeah. He says a mean thing earlier. He says like, "Oh, daddy, you know if you jumped in there, that lion would uh, would kill you." He the says other th- that earlier. That's not yeah. a good thing to bring up. <laughs> Your dad getting torn apart by a by a what? tiger. It's not very nice. I don't know what he's talking about. I, I have no. Yeah, idea. really wrong. When his dad took yeah. him to the zoo. Yeah, 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 yeah the zoo. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, there's a stock footage of a roaring tiger, and then it, then it cuts to them sitting on the bench, being yeah. like, "Daddy, that thing would eat you if you went in there." Yeah, yeah that's yeah. not a nice thing to say. So in subtext, okay. he's saying that he wants his <laughs> okay. dad to die. No one's innocent. Yeah. No one's innocent. The um... all right, good, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, throw the kid under the bus. That's what we do. <laughs> the other yeah. thing that they were, sh- I think they were showing too, is that um, uh, they kind of show this in the very beginning with the Dustin Hoffman character is that, yeah, he could have said the right thing, but would they have actually listened to him? Would they have actually have listened to the Dustin Hoffman character? Because that's the one thing they're showing. No right. one was listening to yeah. him. Oh, like if he if he had explained it? Yeah, because he, yeah, he's, like, the, he's the guy who always makes excuses. And that's the thing. The general. media, in terms mm-hmm. of the media also, and I, I think that's one thing, funny enough, we haven't talked about it a lot, is about the media's role in this movie uh, in terms of the much depth. I feel like and we've had this discussion before. That's I know, but each we movie, did. But, yeah, but each movie is sort of like its own objective thing. Um, but I feel like... I don't know. Just I felt like with all the characters ignoring him um, and showing that because he had, uh, Andy Garcia has a prettier face, he's a prettier image to put on. He's also nicer, and also the media. Also, it was tunnel vision because they had their guy though. Yeah, that's everyone's true. tunnel mm, vision true. too. Yeah. So that that happens in everything. That happens in policing. That yeah. happens once you think you have it. your guy, you're gonna ignore outside evidence that yep. suggests. Yeah that to the contrary mm. that's tunnel You're vision right that. that happens in much more serious context than just the media mm-hmm. like when it when it has to do with life and death yeah so it's a very serious problem and this yeah this kind of just uh is an example of that mm-hmm. just in um maybe like a slightly less serious situation because it's just fame that that's being ignored. like who has the fame at the end of the day mm-hmm. yeah or i guess the million dollars but you know but there's like convictions and stuff like that where people go away you know, yeah, I'm talking like life and death, like like yeah. life in prison. I know, like, like yeah, yeah. Cases yeah so like tunnel vision is well. I mean, like yeah, I guess uh, everybody is watching Making a Murderer. That's yeah. an example of that as well. Yeah. Um, but then again, like that, all that stuff's debatable. But it yeah. happens where yeah. people have been exonerated, and and that was be due to tunnel vision. It's like no. Mm-hmm. You know the Central Park Five is an just example. About to say, there's yeah. there's a lot a lot of examples of that. So I think that that was probably. Yeah, this was just like a light version of that where they're kind of showing that they're showing yeah. that tunnel vi- that tunnel vision that the media has when they pick their 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 person that they're going with, they they'll ignore outside evidence. Just like uh, that's human. That's what uh, human beings will do. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll want to reinforce their narrative. They'll want to reinforce their point of view. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Alex. So. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a human thing. Everyone has good and bad qualities. And Channel 4, they backed, and Stephen Tobolowsky's character, mm. they backed this guy. They backed John Bubber. They chose him. They propped him up. They, they gave him a haircut. They shined him up, and they put him out there. And like Tobolowsky's character said when they were watching Bubber on the TV, he's a natural. Look at our product. That's what they're saying. Look at what we've done. We've given the people a hero. And 
we're we're standing behind him. We're the heroes, just like he's a hero. He's our hero. He's your hero. You have something to look up for, and you have Channel Four to thank for that. Yeah, but you should never trust Channel Four. No, you because shouldn't. Because you shouldn't trust four is an unlucky number. Mm, so yeah. <clears throat> they don't trust Channel Four. They didn't have the whole story. Channel Thirteen, like, though. Also unlucky. Also, unlucky. also unlucky. <laughs> also unlucky. Channel Eight. That's Channel what you want to watch. <laughs> Channel Eight. Now that's the reliable channel. That's yeah. like you know, that's 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 real news. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not that fake stuff. <laughs> so when you put up Bernie Laplante and you put up John Bubber, I think the majority of people are going to choose John Bubber because of what he has to say because of how and he how he looks. Yeah. Yes, and that's that's yeah. part of the reason I chose this film is that the media will choose someone. For whatever reason, mainly based on looks rather than character. Now, if yeah. you look at the character of the two men, yes, you're gonna go with John Bubber rather than Bernie Laplante, almost hands down, because Bernie's done a lot of little shitty things in his life. Yeah, John Bubber. He's a mediocre person. He's a mediocre. <laughs> per- he didn't. Yeah. yeah, and John Bubber did one big thing wrong, which was lie to get the fame. Now, yes. are are either of these guys good or bad? Or are they just human with good and bad qualities? Like, it doesn't make either any less. If you take Bernie, a lot of little things, does that make him a bad guy? And John Bubber did one bad thing, does that make him a bad guy? Or is it all gray? It's this idea of good versus bad. In this day and age, a lot of people... Yeah, it is relative. A lot of people will take one thing that a person has said or done and color their entire character that way by saying... They did this one thing, they're a bad person. And yeah. that's not the case, because that discounts everything else they've done. I agree with that. I agree with that. If, if I had to pick, like you asked that question, if I had to pick between the person, so you're like, let's say the person who's just kind of mean always, and the person who is generally nice, but then does one really bad thing, like that bad thing could be like killing somebody. So I'll take that. So if you're saying like massive severity over like in a moment of weakness, mm-hmm. opposed to a guy who's just generally bad but never goes to that extent, I'll take that generally crappy yeah. person because I can deal with that. Well, that's true too. Like if, if you know what you're gonna get with that type then of you person, just know then you're that's okay fine. With it. You're like, yeah, that's just that's just Laplante, man. Like he's that way. Yeah. As opposed to the guy who surprises you and does that awful thing, and it just it creates a much bigger ripple effect. As opposed to the guy who's predictable that way predictable in his crappiness Mm -hmm. so like personally i would pick the one who's predictably not great but um uh you were saying that um sorry before you were saying that um uh like does that one that one act it um does that make him a bad guy forever i i don't think so no i think that you can always redeem yourself it's your response to what you've done mm-hmm. that can that can make it better it's it's if if you did one really bad thing you should always be you should have learned from that in a big way and constantly be working to make it better at every turn so i think it's your response to it so if you do nothing then yeah you are becoming a you are a bad person if you continue to do nothing to make it better but if you you know try or are always trying to be better because of that always trying to make it right in some way or make it better however you can or just make things in general better than you're redeemed like you can be you're a more redeemable person you can you're not a bad person but i think if you do nothing you are a bad person and uh sort of to kind of go off what you were saying as well i think it more people are inclined to i would say even trust people who done a, a lot more bad thing little bad things compared to one person do one big thing is because as you were saying you're more taken aback and shocked of someone who didn't do anything and did one big thing and all of a sudden your trust for him is instantly gone yeah however for someone who you're accustomed to being a dick or untrustworthy you can trust them to be untrustworthy you're not really mm-hmm. surprised yeah. you know you kind of you're expecting this out of this person yeah. so the imp- when you hear him doing something like okay i've heard that you're just and you're surprised when something good happens yeah, yeah. and, and that's like, what happened wow, at, okay. and that's what happened at the end yeah. is yes. everyone was like wait what he is actually doing this he's doing something good yeah like, what yeah. So, yeah, yeah no, I, 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 that's how I, I curse it to you. But, yeah, I'm with you on that, Andrew, for the most part. Yeah. The other thing that happens when you put two both of them side by side is that you say the, their last mm-hmm. names are just fucking crazy. 
because that was one thing that I kept hearing was like, well, LaPlante and Bubber or whatever. And I was like, these yeah. names, man, these. Now, that's that's not even mean parents. See, that one I can't blame like the reporter. Like that one's like, I mean, that's just their history. That's like, what do you do? You know, you have to, they should have had name changes. They should have paid for it or something because that's just too crazy. They yeah. can have their, their, their TV name, you know, like Michael Keaton. Or they should have just. Yeah, gone, but that's not weird. They should have just gone all the way. And like no. and like that one guy who legally changed his name to Bubba Bubba Bubba. bubba. Yeah. There was one guy who legally changed his name to Sexy Vegan. Did you see that? <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, I mean, I would just, I would just keep the first part. I'm down. But... Change your name to the most ridiculous thing ever. Is, is Sexy board. the first name I'm and Vegan board. the middle name? <laughs> or the is the last name? name. Oh, does he have no, no middle name? Yeah. <laughs> sexy Vegan Carnivore. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Plot twist. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole point. You yeah. have to read my whole name. Yeah. <laughs> To get it. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Names like John Bubber or from the first film I picked from SFW, Cliff Spab. Yeah, these are Spab. not oh, yeah. names that yeah. you would really pick up on as being these big, awesome names, but they're there. And then the people behind them, you gotta, if they did something great, like Cliff Spab, he saved a person in a convenience store. Yeah. He was a yeah. hero. And the me- look what the media did with it's him. The, it's yeah. the person who makes the name, not vice versa. Yeah, I have a feeling Alex doesn't like the media very much. <laughs> um, I have my moments. <laughs> He's going to tell you about can the you, fake news, Can man. you really play? You want to hear about the fake news media? Yeah. He'll tell you, man. Go, go to Infowars.com, get the boner right. pills. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. all there. Yeah. Retransmission starts now. Live infowars.com. That's and don't right. Don't forget your tin what, char- what a character that guy is, man. Just, oh yeah. Oh. They made a Death Grips mashup with him. FYI. Well, the the, the water's <laughs> making the damn frogs gay. Dribble, dribble, dribble. Yeah. It's oh, it's so good. And if you don't like it, the government will send the police to your house to SWAT team your family. Get the DVDs. Make copies of them. Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. I'm not even, it's great. We should not even oh, just say his name, not to give him. <laughs> don't even have to. Yeah, Fuck this guy. Don't even have to. Yeah. Well, he's a. To me, he's a performer. Like he admitted oh, yeah. he was. So he like, said I, he was. I, I, I almost can't. Like, yeah, he did. He, yeah, in he, court, he, he's he's definitely uh, profiting off of people through that. But at the same time, you're like, well. It, is a character at the end of the day i feel like you shouldn't be fooled by it so easily but people but... are yeah well whatever <laughs> oh, well that's the world right that's yeah what you do but if if he see no he okay so he yeah. in this instant is instance is like a predictably shitty person is he on though? a regular basis well i don't know him personally I, i've heard so the shit like... he, i've heard the shit he actually does he's a shitty person <laughs> well i've heard uh, i've heard maybe. to the contrary that he was kind of normal um like from like people who knew him before or whatever. Well, the, but... the reason why I know that he admitted he's a performance artist is because of well, he got sued or something. No, no, right? no, no, no. He, it's with no. um uh, custody wife. battle with his wife. Oh, that's what it was. And just okay. hearing the actual stuff with his kids, I'm like, yeah. dude, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So he's like consistently shitty. Whatever. Like, take what you will, public yeah, yeah, or yeah, private. Yeah, yeah. But like, you expect that. So you're kind of. Like, eh. But you know he hasn't killed anybody that we know. Of. There you go. <laughs> or so like, you know, like it's like, yeah, he's what I expect. And that's actually a great example of just showing, yeah, just somebody who you expect him to be an asshole, and then you when you hear a celebrity, I'm not surprised, and it doesn't like bother me a lot. I just think it's kind of well, the shit he says, kind of humorous. It's more the people who are like listening to those shows and stuff and react and doing actually really shitty things that's what bothers me it's not it's not the guy who's just reliably saying shitty Mm -hmm. stuff like you know i think definitely definitely i think putting hate out there is is usually a bad thing but i also think the responsibilities on the people uh you know listening or to to counter that everybody's responsible for themselves and i feel like uh, not enough people know that though people, people don't yeah people get swayed a little too easily or they or they feed into the hate a little too easily so yeah yeah i i don't know yeah a guy like that like yeah to me he's just kind of shitty but does it you know am i like so pissed off about it not really no i just expect that from him exactly and that's that's a great example of you that's somebody you expect but then when you hear somebody who you admire that hurts that hurts a lot because you're like damn like that person i i just can't trust them anymore like you were saying like Mm -hmm. they're yeah, I just don't like them anymore. That that feels like a betrayal. It mm-hmm. feels like a tr- mm. like a real betrayal. Yeah, and that and that goes you know a long way. And I feel like those moments of betrayal ruin any goodwill that you did. Um, no matter whether yeah, that's, we're seeing a lot of that right now. Too, yeah, right? and whether so, or not and whether or not that's the justified or not. Current climate. So. That's that just it is yeah. what it is. 
unfortunately it is what it is. You could have been a saint, and yet even if you get accused of something that you never did, like your. But fault, again, that that brings but, it back to yeah. the how you respond to what you did, and, mm-hmm. and how you work to make it better. Because I humans are imperfect; they're gonna make a mistake, and you can make a big mistake. It doesn't mean that your life should be over because of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, again, that's debatable because people say there are certain things that you can never come back from. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm not gonna like touch that, but yeah, you know, I don't know. My, my, I, I, heard I can go- agree with those yeah. people as well because there are some things that I that that you don't that I don't talk about that mm-hmm. I would also think that yeah, you can't come back from. Yeah, yeah. like liking The Last Airbender, like that movie. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah if you I like mean, that movie, you like Avatar: The Last Airbender. If go fuck you yourself. like that movie, yeah, just go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah. just go fuck. The show's great, but yeah. I mean, just don't. I heard a, a good quote recently where they were saying um, um, the only thing that people should really honestly be, be – if they should be questioning whether or not they should do something because they're afraid to do it or not, mm. they should be really asking themselves, is this going to kill you? Yeah. Because if it's not, any other fears that you have in your head are all made up in your head because really it's all about are you going? is this going to kill you? That should be really the only natural instinctive fear. Anything else is all in our heads. So to kind of go off – if something happens to you and yeah. you're still alive, you're still eating, it's not the end. You can still keep going. You can still move. It's whether or not something's actually going to kill you is whether or not you should be afraid of and whether you should back off of. I've read that recently. I was like, hmm. Yeah, but it. if you kill someone, though. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you harming prison, others should be well, the limit. Well, no, 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 no. That, that's <laughs> the way I look at it. So I frame it differently. Living. I always said when you're considering something, you should consider its impact on others. That's why yeah. I have always been a strong proponent of – uh, when it comes to self harm, punishing people for mm-hmm. self harm, I've never understood that. Neither have I. Mm-hmm. Um, but for harming others, where your actions will lead to any kind of harm on somebody else, I think that that is when you should decide not to do it. Oh no, no, always I was, think yeah. of your impact on other people. Like harm on yourself. Mm-hmm. No, at the end of the day, like you can make those decisions. That's up to you. But I think that the if you're going to pick like a golden rule, it should be your impact on others. No, right? no, and that's fine. And I wasn't really alluding to like those kind of decisions. It was more like, like your inner conflict of like fears of being antisocial, whether or not, mm. you know, oh, are they going to like me? I'm afraid. You know, oh, okay. It's yeah. that kind of fear. It's like, are you going to die? No. You can, then you can proceed. You can move forward. Anything you're only your worst enemy for that moment. That's sort of what I was more of. Not making those kind of decisions. I agree with you on there, uh, what you were your rebuttal, but that wasn't kind of what I was alluding to with that quote. It was more or less uh, all these inner fears or any of these doubts inside of yeah, you are I, your own. Because I mean, doubts. like Bubber, like yeah, it's not gonna kill him, but he probably shouldn't have done that because of the impact on others. Yeah, right? and I think and that's what Dustin Amon comes like. Really, are you just gonna jump off for this? Like honestly, you don't have to do this. There's a way. Yeah, and that no, and he also brought up. See, this is what I, I thought was great too. He brought up the impact on on others, not just himself. Mm-hmm. Like uh, on Bubber, he was saying, "You doing that? What's it gonna do to all these people that you're trying to help?" Mm-hmm. Nobody will be helped. You will have like impacted all of them. So he was still caring about all of them and like trying to say like you're going to ruin that by doing this to yourself but so it, again yeah. it not not just impact on bubber himself like his action on himself it's the action that his the consequences that his actions will have on other people and that's why i have more empathy for him too um is because he's aware of that and no fact, he had, had to be pointed out by yeah. again the guy who's the uh the anti-hero but right? it wasn't just pointed out by him it was pointed out by gina davis when they were playing she's like People are less cynical, they're more hopeful because of you and all that stuff. So they were already making him a like like he's helping other people outside. Yeah. The, with the children's hospital. And when he finds out that kid woke up because of what he said, that was like he was so touched by that. He liked mm-hmm. that. And shown that he can, even in this shitty situation he got himself into, he actually can still surprisingly help people. Yeah. And the fact that he made that choice to do that, you know made me kind of like i said we're kind of almost going back to the, the previous conversation so yeah. i won't go too far into it yeah. is but yeah that was just another example of like as you were saying that he has to live with that and he's willing in the beginning to kind of eat that guilt inside to see that um the other people being happy and feeling hopeful and remorse and feeling like you can do something with their life we can all be heroes um Obviously, with the climax, the weight gets on him. And I, I again, I think it comes from. A, I, I think some of that came from selfishness, because like at the mm-hmm. end of the day, it's no. You he could have at any point come out and thrown himself under the bus and been honest, right? Mm-hmm. But he 
he was too nervous about the impact it would have on him like that 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 shame right mm -hmm. so that's a shame is is a selfish thing as well right because it's your worry about how people will perceive you mm -hmm. and that that shame that you feel if if you if you don't come out about about what it is that you've done wrong it's because you're worried about what people will think about you yeah. and that's a selfish thing yeah. as opposed to like because a lot of times you should if if you are a truly truly good person then you would come out and you would be honest about it regardless to the impact to you because it's the right thing to do for those other people yeah and he didn't do that yeah. you know for for a long time so again it was it, the motivation is a little bit selfish mm -hmm. again like i'm saying like i still thought like it wasn't one dimensional and i i totally appreciate that and mm -hmm. i think at the end he started to to go making it better route yeah and he did in a lot of ways and that's where i was like on board yeah but it just it took me longer than you to get there because i wasn't quite mm -hmm. on board for like the majority of the movie with his motivations i just thought right. it was unlikable yeah no and i liked where they went with it and yeah in the end, I th what, going off what you were saying, I do think we need we need more people nowadays to be stand up and actually do what's right instead of for their own selfish needs. Yeah, yeah. Be, be a little more selfless. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, I mean, it's counter it's counter to uh, human nature mm -hmm. to be selfless like that, but it's also uh, uh, it's indicative of how we've evolved too. Yeah, selflessness is not something that makes sense. No. Uh, f as a human being, right? To do that, to self-sacrifice, that makes no sense. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. in terms of how we've evolved and how we've changed, it, it's 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 a sign of that. Yeah. And I do hope with what's been going on this, particularly with last year, with what's happened in Hollywood, more people need to be like in that. politics. It's it's the, you know the floodgates are starting to open because of I feel like there's been too many people of who haven't stand up and yeah, say buddy, something's right. We got a lot of hate to wade through. You yeah, just wait. I know. Yeah. It's yeah. it's uh, I, I we'll see how it goes, but yeah. uh the world could use more people standing up, so Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like to his credit, it just took a while he got there. Yeah. But I, again, it was just it took me a while to be on board with it. Mm -hmm. But I like the character. Like I liked all the characters, like yeah, I said. There's no I had issues. I had no no major issues with had, had the characters. Like I said, this was just like in terms of how I felt about the character, but I can hate a character and it's still a good character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm no, not written. again, I'm not oh, saying yeah. he's a bad character. No, he's, he's really yeah, good. No, yeah, no doubt. But yeah. no qualms in terms of like the actual like yeah, the making of the no, movie. Or... No, 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 no. Filmic like if you wanted my filmmaking expertise, uh, I thought yeah. it, was, it was really good. Yeah. I thought it was edited well. I thought it was shot well. That plane going by the car in the window that was, was cool. fantastic. How, how many, yeah, how, many, really uh, how many f stops would you give it out of f bombs? <laughs> um, I give it a um, five point six out of uh, nine f stops. Yeah, um, that's probably of, a good ratio. Of, yeah. <laughs> Uh, compared to f bombs, um, I don't know. On a ten f bomb scale. On a ten f bomb scale. On a ten f bomb scale with an up your now, ass. Now is now now is the higher the number means it was worse or is the lower than the? I'll let you worse? decide. Oh. I feel like this is like a Conan O'Brien scale. <laughs> it is. He's my inspiration. <laughs> That's what you're doing. Yeah. Um, I'll probably give it about a seven f bombs, seven eight f bombs, something like that. We could decide, interpret that. Yeah, how but we will. but but honestly, my f stop is more accurate to my actual. Thing, <laughs> right. <so. laughs> Ryland, what were your there. final thoughts? Um, I don't know. I, I I'm not very good at uh, at number ratings, so I'll I'll, mm. I'll 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 leave the f stops and the f bombs and everything. But I enjoyed this movie. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. Um, like I said, I wish they kind of explored the relationship with media and building someone up just a little bit more, but I still um, found it really entertaining, uh, really interesting. Uh, so I guess, yeah, just the important thing to remember, don't believe everything you see on the news because media likes to paint things in terms of black and white, uh, good and evil heroes and villains, where the truth is those qualities exist in all of us and we need to bring them out of each other. Zach. See, I give this movie a two plus two. Because it's too good, and you should see it two times. Jack will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? No, I have a scale for you, Zach. How oh, many it's... milkshakes would you give it? Oh, man. I'd get a mountain. How many boys would it bring to your yard? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, let's I just say the, yard, the, yard, the yard's not big enough. The, yard, oh. the, yard, oh. the yard's oh. not big enough. See, you need, you need more like a planet. <laughs> that's what you need that's how many boys you got a boy planet <laughs> with the gold bums <laughs> man there's a movie I, idea no there's a Rick and Morty episode yeah idea. fair enough 
Um, there was one quick thing I wanted to mention. Yeah. Other thing I really liked about this movie, very quick, is um, I liked that they didn't push or went further with any romantic element yeah. in this movie. I yeah, li- yeah, yeah. I liked that they kept that out. It was yeah. kept up oh, there. Yeah. I love there was no it stupid. Ruined the, it would have no, ruined it. it would have nothing drags the story down yeah. like a forced romance. Yeah. Exactly. I'm glad that they didn't do that. So yeah. uh, props to the movie there. I mean, yeah, the emotional connection is uh, he loves his kid. There you go. Good there enough. you go. Good enough. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Sorry, Zach, continue. Well, no, I was pretty much done. No, he was... D- Dude, yeah. he said... I think go, the, bo- the, the, the boys' yard, the unless boys you planet... Me, unless you want to give me another <laughs> scale, or, the, or the are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? Boys to the planet? Yeah, mm-hmm. are you satisfied with that, or do you want to give well, me another scale? what about a scale? boys to men planet? Oh, another scale. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, I was going to say, you want a scale. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> feels... <laughs> I had feels. I had feels. Um, let me see. Let let me think. Which which uh, feels moments? Andrew trademarks feels moments. Did were there in this movie? Um, you know, uh, were the cops treated well in this movie? Ooh, police <laughs> in this movie. Police in this movie. That's a good question. Um, the judge was a kind of a moron. Uh, hey man, he knew how to slam that thing down. Yeah, I mean, gavel. He had to, he had to, gavel. He had to see boom, the boom. report at twelve o'clock, um, man. I love it. It's just like your client is a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Good thing he didn't pull out a gun and fire it. Yeah, I was, I was just <laughs> thinking he that. was the better judge, I guess, if you compare. Yeah, it he's to better that behaved guy. than some. And in regards to the cops, um, I mean, there was that crappy cop at the. Uh, at the like, I think were they at a hotel or something, or the hospital? The were they at the hospital, hospital at the time when he was coming out and they were trying to hold the crowd out while uh, Bubber is leaving? And then that cop basically picks him up and starts giving him hell, right? Yeah. And that he you was an okay think... cop. Yeah, I thought he was fine. Cop. Yeah, like he he looked like he wouldn't do much, but at the same yeah. time he didn't do anything wrong. So uh-huh. yeah, this gets like a this gets a pass. Okay. For uh, for cops in the movie, All if right. that's gonna be my scale. See, and see, in terms see. of in terms of feels, I, I I can't say I had much feels in this one. Yeah, so I, I, I can't I say was, I had much feels. So if I was if I was going to give you a scale of Black Christmas to The Wire, where Ooh. does this rank in terms of coppage? <laughs> oh, in terms of coppage. Yeah, you, you have a cop scale, man. Oh. Yeah, now you have a cop scale. Oh, like so if the scale is or inside even it's inside to uh the wire sorry inside to the wire yeah. this is like the... In, no, you got to go inside to junior <laughs> that's that's the kind of no, no, no. kindergarten cop no 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 inside to the wire that's a good scale i like that that's a really good scale i'd say it's a home alone Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interpret that how you will. I know exactly what you're talking about there. That's great. <laughs> oh, wow. So that, that, those are my final thoughts on the movie, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I like these skills. <laughs> these skills are fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Are no, we I mean, I, we've all like we've all just gushed over this movie. I think at the end of the day, we all had enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it seems like a pretty unanimous uh, it, like opinion on it. Like, yeah, we have like small things, but they're like just character elements that we're debating. It's not actual quality no. which that we're talking about. So at the end of the day, I think we're all saying that like so for me personally, I think uh, I could see how it was underrated uh, and how no uh, how people didn't see it. It was just overshadowed. I think you should see it because it's actually really interesting. The runtime it just flies by. It's a really interesting watch. I I highly recommend it. It got my butt hard. It got Zach's butt hard. <laughs> butt hard. So you know, that's that's a uh, that's a uh, that's a glowing review from him. Yeah. It got yeah. Jack's uh, f stops hard. So that's a that's a high wow. praise from him. Andrew, wow. You, you should stop with the x f stop. <laughs> now you can't tell him. Not 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 now you're stretching. Yeah, now, now. <laughs> I don't know what f stops are. So I'm. Oh no no no. <laughs> Well, we didn't need you to tell us that. <laughs> also, how is this the second go-to so reference did, on the show? So did I just make a weird reference with F-stops? Because that's great. I am actually really happy about that. No, I think we're telling you to F-stop. Oh! <laughs> it's hurting the crowd. And, uh, and Ryland gave it, and Ryland gave it uh, you know, uh, every DC villain out of, out of every Marvel villain, I guess. She's just one... So, one villainous hole over so there. So you mean a shit scale and then one? Yeah. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I think he's trying to say I'm diabolical. Yes. Okay, fine. That's right. I can live with that. Except cheesy and not memorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's your there's your superhero villains. Except for Loki. 
Uh, yeah, really. I mean, they they all have superhero problems, but at least they have one out of like a ton. It's not good, but still, it's I guess it's better on the scoreboard. Yeah. One versus zero, yeah. I get a win, right? It's a base hit. Yeah, one nothing is uh, is a winning score. Yeah. yeah, it is. Good job. But it's pretty. Hey, it's what, it's what it comes down to games. anyway. Any higher uh, points just cancel each other out. It yeah. ultimately comes down to the one and the zero. That's true. No, that's, that's true. Right. That's Binary. Right. All right, Alex, we have nothing bad to say. Good. So, <laughs> so that's Hero, 1992, Dustin Hoffman. Go out and see it. And paraphrasing Christopher Plummer's character from the Michael Mann movie The Insider, history will judge us more at the end of our life than everything leading up to it, unfortunately. I dedicate this podcast to more of an acquaintance, but... At one point, he was a friend. Darren George, some of you who are my friends who are listening know who he was. Good guy. I guess everyone is someone's hero at some point. Thank you all very much for listening. We will be back next week. It'll be Ryland's pick. Don't forget to check out the Vitos, V-I-D-O-S. We stole their song, and it's ours now, and it makes our podcast sound really good. And we love you. <laughs> check out the Jabroni Jabber podcast with Brody and Nick talking about wrestling. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.